my buddy and I took a trip up north to Fort Ross just to hang out before school got back in. I wanted to go poke polling just to sort of test the waters around the area, see if there were any uh, monkey face eels. And I did catch one and it was 17 and a half inches. But my focus started to shift when I found this dive bag and noticed that there was a lot of sea urchins that I could store in it. When I was poke polling in this tide pool area, I noticed a little pattern. And I thought it was a fish, but when I pulled it out, it was oh, actually it's a just net. this dive bag. <laughs> I was like, oh man, someone's dive bag. Cool. I could forage some sea urchins. So I was actually excited to try out sea urchins for the first time. Um, I asked my buddy here to toss the knife to me Thanks. so I could immediately start trying to pry off these sea urchins. Gonna catch some sea urchin or harvest some sea urchin. And there goes my sea urchin. <laughs> and there goes my sea urchin. Washed off. Oh. Surprisingly, sea urchins are easy to pry off the rocks. Uh, I thought that I would get stung by them or that their uh, needles would get stuck in my hands. But if you handle them with a delicate touch, there's really no reason why they should, should prick oh. you. So if you're interested in getting some sea urchins, a couple facts that you should know is that you can find them on rocky shores like, like this one, generally in tide pool areas. Um, they grow to about three to four inches and it's actually encouraged that you take uh, a lot of them. They fall under the invertebrate limit, bag limit of 35 per day but there's some emergency regulations in place because there's actually an overabundance of sea urchins and so they're actually encouraging that you take 20 gallons a day of them but I'm pretty sure that's way above what a normal person would eat for a day so use your discretion when you're uh, taking sea urchins so now the fun part to actually get to the urchin row that's inside, you kind of have to stab it and sort of cut in a circle around its teeth and then drain it like I did just right there. You need to dispose of the guts and the kelp that are just floating around in there. And what you're left with, what you're going to be left with is about five strips of the urchin row and it actually tastes pretty good. If you get urchin row, that's this bright orange yellow color, generally it'll taste like sweet fish eggs. That's kind of what I, that's how I describe it. It's actually pretty good. I've seen YouTube videos of people spreading it over toast. You might have it in sushi restaurants, but uh, this was my first time actually opening one and trying it and tasting it. I would advise that you rinse it first. I think it cleanses the taste a bit, but I kind of just wanted to taste it straight up, like right there. Hmm, it's good. I also had my buddy taste it, and he enjoyed it. Just like in the restaurants. <laughs> oh, Renee. Damn. Is it good? Yeah.